Okay. So this is the actual. And we want to know if our kid draws a picture of this scene, what will be the height of the tree in inches? Okay, so RV, sort of extra information, just fun to draw. Whatever. Okay, one of the key words here is we want the answer in inches. So can we convert 25 feet into some number of inches? Yes. How? Not divided. So we say 25 times 12. If you're thinking of whether or not you should multiply or divide, you think, what would you have more of, inches or feet? Inches, inches right? It's 12 inches for every foot. So this number should be bigger than 25. 25 times 12 does work out to 300 inches. Okay. And we're making a picture of this. It's going to be smaller by a scale of 1 12th. So how can we figure out the size of this tree if the scale is 1 12th? We can divide it by... Not by 112, just by 12. So if we take 300 and divide it by 12, or we could also do 300 times 1 over 12, which does work out the same exact way. And it is 25. How could we have gotten that without having to work it out? We, we just did it. We said 25 times 12 is 300, so 300 divided by 12 would have to be 25. Why did you keep the tree the same? Because now it's not 25 feet. This is 25 inches. Oh, that's why this is smaller. The numbers just work out. Since what is the scale from feet to inches? It's times 12. Okay. So, since we multiply by 12, divide by 12, we end up with the same number. So our answer is just 25 inches. Wonderful. Okay. Number two. This is probably one of the more work-intensive problems on here. So we have a rectangle with dimensions 3 by 5. And we enlarge it by a scale factor of 1.4. By what percent does the area increase? So we're going to need to know the original area and the new area. And we need to know what percent that increases by. So what's the original area? Is 15. That's the easy part. Okay, two ways we could get the new area. What could we do? Well, that's one way we, that won't work. You could times 5 times 1.4 and 3 times 1.4 and then multiply those together to get a new area. What else? Remember we said the new is always equal to what? The original, the original times. Scale factor. Scale factor. But since it's area, it's scale factor what? Squared. Squared. So we can't just multiply 15 times 1.4. We'd have to multiply it by 
1.4 squared. It was volume, because volume's in three dimensions. Either way, you work this out. We should get 29.4 as our new area. Did you round that? No. Nope. Okay. Then the second part of this question is what percent does the area increase? So what we look at Anytime we're solving a question about percents, we can think of it as a proportion using 100% as one of the numbers. So if we needed a key, 100% would be the original area. And what is the part we care about? The percent what? Increase. So can we determine how much the area inc increased by? Yes. What is the difference between our new and our original? Ah, So 14.4 is the amount of increase. Sure. No. What was the original amount? 15. And we want to know what is that percent increase. So you cross multiply, you should get an answer bigger than 90, less than 100. You should get go to one decimal, please. I'm because it's the uh, the difference between the new and the original. So it increased in size by fourteen point four. By either working out this are finding the new sides and multiplying them together. When you're multiplying by 100, you just add two zeros to the right. Uh, not necessarily. You move the decimal two places. <coughs> two places to the bigger. <laughs> what? 
Okay. So what's the answer? 96 percent. Okay. So 14.4 times 100 should have been 1,440 divided by 15 is 96. Cross multiply and divide. You know how to do that. Then you divide that by 15. All right, minimum area of a cardboard, minimum area of cardboard needs to make a box. So we have a three-dimensional box here. Uh, dimensions of 16, 12, and 6. If we're looking to construct the box, are we looking at surface area or volume? You don't make stuff out of what goes inside of it. Sometimes you do. What? No. Anytime you make a box, talking about surface area. If you are filling the box, that's volume. But if you're constructing the box, that's surface area. So S, in case you don't have a formula chart handy or don't have these memorized. Perimeter of the base times the height wait, wait, plus wait, wait, two wait, times wait, wait, the area of the base. Okay, so. All right, okay. So, to find to find perimeter of the base and area of the base, first thing we need to do is identify the base. Since it's a rectangular prism, it doesn't really matter, but usually we pick the one on the bottom or the top. So we have one rectangle we really care about and it's 16 
by 12. Okay? So please don't try to say the area of the base is 16 or 12. The area of the base has to be calculated. Let's take a second. Find the perimeter of the base. Find the area of the base. Stop. Hey. Stop looking at the window. Stop. Hey. Yeah. So the perimeter is 56. The area? Okay. The height is whichever number you didn't use plus 2 times that. Then this just becomes basic arithmetic, 56 times 6. 336. And that adds up to, so. 720 what? Centimeters squared. Areas in two dimensions. Because area is in two dimensions. Yes, what about the cube? We're solving for the area. Area, regardless of what kind of shape it is, is in two dimensions. Yes, volume is cubed, area is squared. Yes. Okay.
Five minutes ago. Right. Regular pool. So we can draw ourselves our pool here. Okay. Uh, it's got a length of 46. 46. With the 12.5 feet and a height of 5.5 feet. Okay. It wants to know about the railing. So really, we don't care about the whole pool. We only care about this perimeter around the top. So do we have some information we're never going to use? We're never going to use 5.5. Okay. The second thing we need to look at, one of our units is in feet. One of them's, yes, thank you, Sergio, is in inches. So we need to convert one of them. So now you could decide on your own which one to use, and you'd have a 50% chance of being right. Or how could you know for sure? Where will it tell us which one to convert? Yes, thank you, Marco. If you read the question, it says, how many feet are there? Which means we want everything in feet. So how can we turn 46 inches into some number of feet? So once we get that, then it's just a matter of finding the perimeter of a rectangle, which I would hope you know how to do. But... Sometimes I worry. So turn it into feet, then find the perimeter, and that's your answer, and then we can move on. Go to one decimal place here and put that answer right there. What? Some people did. So, both, they, it's the same thing, they both go to, <laughs> literally same thing. Okay, so we divide it, we get 3.8, so then we add up all the sides. We get. You guys had to divide and then add. OK. 
Okay. Well, this is six. Two, six, two. Okay. Uh, it's like these boxes, mostly for fun. Yeah. Uh, perimeter, you have to know how to do this. If you're still wondering, how do we find perimeter? I don't have my chart with me. Okay. Perimeter, this formula is not on your chart anymore. Because at some point you need to memorize that perimeter means add up all the sides. And when you consider that no shape except for squares and squares, wait, I say squares and squares, squares and rectangles have a formula for perimeter, it just becomes easier to say add up all the sides. Yes. All right. One last tricky question, then the rest get kind of easy. So, cylinder, uh, six centimeters. Okay, a lot of unnecessary information here. Since we want to know area of the label of the can, in case nobody ever took you to a store, you've never seen a can before. The label, the label does not go on the top, label does not go on the bottom, it only goes on the middle. So if we're looking at surface area, we talk about total surface area or lateral surface area here? Lateral. So if it's something that doesn't include the top and the bottom, it's lateral. Okay. This is a can of orange juice, right? We want to know about the label. Does the label for your orange juice, does it go on the top? Does it go on the bottom? No. So it's lateral. Yes. Only after you make it. Because it's frozen. <laughs> okay. So we need the surface area of this, the formula in case you don't have it memorized because you're not cool. It's 2 pi r times the height. You can use 3 for this. No. She'll live. Uh, this whole thing about how many are in a pack and how much they cost, what is that good for? Nothing. All right. So now, here's the part where everyone's going to get this question wrong. Hey. Okay, you need to read the question to where it says, what's the answer in meters? Then you need to get over the fact that none of your science teachers ever taught you this and how to go from centimeters to meters. So we say, okay, what makes this problem a little bit easier is that it's meters and centimeters as opposed to inches and feet. So these numbers are going to work out better. To go from any unit in metric to another, the digits don't change, just the decimal place. OK? 
Okay. So six centimeters is not six hundred. Okay. Okay. Stop. Just, just relax. If we look, how does this decimal point move to get from 100 to 1? 2. 2 to the left. left. So if we have 6, we're going to move that decimal 2 to the left. And that's going to be what? 0 0.06 meters. OK? Nice and easy. Numbers don't change. We just move the decimal point. Moving the decimal? But the answer is 1.8. OK. No. Then we have the height. That's 10 centimeters. So again, we move the decimal how many places? Two. Two. So 10 centimeters is the same as? Point one zero. Point 0.1 meters. Okay. If you move this two places to the left, what do you get? Point ten. Could I put a zero here? Yes. Right. Okay. No, just <laughs> okay. Continue listening for you just confuse yourself more. All right. All we've done. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so all we've done is we've taken the same exact shape, and instead of centimeters, now we have 0 0.06 meters by 0 0.1 meter. So all we've done is just converted. Now we can answer our question. So we have 2 for 2, 3 for pi. What's our radius? 0 0.03, and our height is going to be 0.1. So all the people who said 180, you had the right numbers, but your decimal was all up in the wrong place. <laughs> How did I do what? I just did a lot. OK, forget I put that. Okay, two times three. Six times point oh three is point eighteen times point one. Is point zero one eight. And that's centimeters squared. Yes, that's the answer. No, don't ask me. Oh, I'm sorry, meters. Thank you. Good thing one person's paying attention. Because <laughs> of the whole explanation we just went. Don't worry, it'll be available later to look at. <laughs> Why is it point zero three? Why is it just three? Wow. Well, you see, it's it's the enemy thing, but it needs to go to meet the screen. Okay. No. No, I didn't. I asked. All right, box and whisker plot, we went over it. Not everyone went over it, only the good kids who care about their grades. Um, we have people. Okay, the reason we don't spend a lot of time on this is only good for one question. The kids who don't pay attention anyways aren't going to get it, so it's not really worth wasting a day on. Okay. 
What a box whisk plot is useful for is this middle point here is the median. Oh, I didn't know that that's the range the two endpoints show in mean. The end of the box on the left. This is the lower median. Over here is the upper median. And then we have So those are the five points we know on our box and whisker plot. So the one thing we can definitely get out of it is the median. The range we can get because it gives us the lowest and the highest value. So you cannot determine the average. Okay, the reason we can't get the average is because there's no indication of which numbers are actually on here except for the biggest and smallest. Yes. You also can't find the mode. But that's not one of the choices because then you'd have two right answers. Then. Because it doesn't say anything about what numbers are part of the set. So if you can't add up all the numbers, you can't find the average. Watch it at home. All right, area of a garden is 49 feet. What equation would you use to find the side length? OK, all right, OK, OK. What you could do is you just think, if my area is 49, what is the side length? Uh, seven. seven. So you think if x equals 7, right, which of these equations is true? Well, does 7 equal 49 squared? No. No. Does the square root of 7 equal 49? No. 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 Does the square root of 49 equal 7? Yes. Oh, yes. Look. And just for fun, does 4 times 7 equal 49? Yes. No. no. So none of these answers make sense except for the one we circled, which is the answer. Why is that one in bold? I thought the I thought the hint was when I circled it. No, no, before we went over it. It was the hint that was in bold. Except if we hadn't gone over it, would you have even notice that? Yes, I Alright. So the next quiz I'm gonna bold one of the answers on each one. <laughs> Alright. Number cube. Six faces numbered one through six. What's the difference, percent difference, between experiments probability and theoretical? So we start with theoretical. What are the chances we should get an odd number? Okay. Uh, how many how many odd numbers are there on a cube? Three. Three out of six. Okay. So that is 50%. Yes, it is. Because it wants it as a percent. How about the experimental probability? How many times did they actually roll an odd number? So how many ones? How many threes? And five. So if we add that up, we get 24 out of how many times total? 50. We could turn that into a decimal and then a percent. Or we could think 24 out of 50 is what out of 100? Which means that it's 48% of the time. Correct? So what is the difference between 50 and 48? It's just 2%. And that's your answer. Right. 
<laughs> what do I have to do to indicate that that's the answer? Like, I say, and that's the answer, and I put a box around it, and then 20 seconds later, inevitably, somebody says, is 2% the answer? Because because I got 1.8 as the area for that cylinder, isn't that right? Or no, it's 180. You're way off. No. Uh, I need to have 29 fans in here. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. That was... That was the joke I made a minute ago, and you're just, you just figured it out, and then you tried to say it back. I don't think I got it. Okay. Uh, yes, fans. Because there's two meanings. Like a fan that circulates air, and then a fan. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. So it says this one's a little bit different. And then it says the scale factor is 3 to 4. What is another way to write 3 to 4? It's 3 over 4, which means our scale factor is 3 fourths. Okay? Remember, every ratio is a fraction, every fraction is a ratio. So the larger perimeter is 200. What is the new perimeter? So we go back to our scale factor formula that says the new is the original times scale factor. Since it's just perimeter, how many, how many dimensions do we have? Just one. Because perimeter is just a line. Area is two. Okay, so it's perimeter one, area two, volume two. Yes. Okay, so our original is 200 times three fourths. So 200 over one times three over four. You can work that out. No, if, if you're just multiplying, you go straight across. The only time you cross multiply is with proportions when they're equal. So 200 times 3 over 4, which simplifies to 300 over 2. Which is so. What's our new perimeter? One fifty. Yes, let's do that. Answer. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. You wait. Uh, problems like this. I would draw out the grid. No matter how smart you think you are, that doesn't surprise me. Okay. Hey. I I round that up to a minute. So if you have the point x negative y. So x is positive, y is negative. So what quadrant would that be in? Oh, two. Right here, right? Positive x, negative y, quadrant four. And one, two, and three. Just in case somebody, no, that's just where it is. If we reflect that across the y axis, that's this guy right here. Which means our point will end up over here, correct? So what is going to be true about the x-coordinate now? 
So is it going to be positive or negative? negative. So negative. x, so we're going to have negative x. How about y? Positive. positive. If it's, negative. it's still, so our coordinates are negative x, negative y. Tutoring for what? It's like the first day of six weeks. Six weeks are over. Other grade? Like the mystery grade? No, the one I got. What? Okay, but six weeks are over. So what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know how to make this more clearly. It's over. Over. You passed. Are you sure? Yes, I put in grades fifth period. Okay, now that we all know that Jaslyn S. passed math, Everybody. don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. 46 minutes. Oh.